think it's very attractive. Um, if you look at the differential between the U.S. market and the Chinese market, the, it's a it's a gaping, <laughs> you know, jaws. So um, there's about a 30% differential between the performance of Shanghai Composite and S&P 500 uh, this year. So that is a huge difference. If you think about what's actually going on in the trade war, okay, it may hurt China on the margin, but it's also really going to hurt the U.S. and it's going to hurt a lot of U.S. companies that do business in China. So I think that that gap between performance in the two markets is very extreme versus the the sort of economic analysis of how it's going to impact both uh, countries. So we actually really like China right now. We've added to China recently. Um, there's, there's sort of two things that could happen here. One is if the trade war gets a, a lot worse, then China will likely stimulate their own economy to, to um, you know, offset some of the negative impacts of, of the trade war. So these could be things like more spend on infrastructure, uh, cutting RRRs, this is equivalent to an interest rate cut, things like that. And so we own um, some banks, we own some old economy companies in, in China like steel and cement, which will benefit from that. And then obviously if the trade war does get better and that negotiated outcome uh, scenario that I, I mentioned before comes through, then there's going to be a lot of companies that go up and just that sort of relief rally uh, will be very positive. So we're seeing a lot of opportunities in China. There are a lot of babies who have been thrown out with the trade war bathwater, and that's what we're, we're looking for in China. We also are seeing um, opportunities in India. India has been by far the best performing uh, Asian and emerging market thus far in 2018. In the last few days, it's had a bit of a wobble, and we've seen some, some buying opportunities uh, arise there also. So I still really like India. You know, India is something we've been talking about for almost four years now. And um, the Indian economy, the last quarterly GDP print was 8.2% growth. So there is no other major economy in the world that's growing at 8.2%. And from our perspective, to find growth companies in a country where the whole thing is growing at 8.2% is really easy, right? If you're in an industry that's growing a bit faster than the whole economy and you're a company that's taking market share, you can easily get 20 to 30% growth. So when we run our, our growth screens, we get dozens and dozens and dozens of Indian companies that pop up as meeting our, our growth criteria. So one stock I like in particular is Maruti Suzuki. So I think we've, we've talked about this stock before. It's one that we've liked for quite a long time. Um, and it, it, over the last 10 years, has been a 10-bagger, and I think that that's going to continue. It's very consistent, post 20% EPS growth every year, and the PE is not demanding, so you can just keep the same PE and just compound over time. Um, but it has pulled back quite a bit recently, um, because as you may know, there are these floods in Kerala, and um, southern India is, is a big um, part of its sales, so it ha could have a few, or probably one or two quarters, where sales are a bit um, under expectations. But for a company um, you know, that has a 10-year runway of very strong growth, one or two quarters of negative sales because, of, or not negative sales, you know, under sales under expectations um, because of a natural disaster is something that we think is a fantastic buying opportunity.